disadvantage. Oh yeah. Uh, and so you know, so those and that that uh, caused fragmentation in the market because they're small, you know, mom and pop stores who can sell at a lower price. And so there are, yeah. the, and in, in for example, in tea, uh, there's a situation where people cut off forest land and plant bushes, and they can do that for a very small area of land without getting caught. So there's a lot of these, you know, examples of how. You know, non-compliance non can cause can, yeah. or cause the industry to never develop. I know. Ankit Singh ji, I mean, uh, you're still having trouble with your video. Uh, I believe it's showing uh, undo. I believe. Hmm? Can I check your end. I think you have to uh, click on the video. We yeah, can't see. You. If you go to the bottom of the screen, you will see leave on the left, and then after that, you'll see share screen, and then stop video or switch on video. So you yeah, resume or stop. Yeah, but not allowing me to open that, activate. It's showing oh, red signal. That's interesting. Uh, you entered through wrong link. Did you enter through a uh, what is it called? Google Chrome. Uh, from I believe uh, my Z Gmail account. Yeah, but Google Chrome. Yes, Google, not... Google Chrome, right? Oh, so. Uh... You so see these icons on the top, as Rudra is saying. You see these icons on the bottom. I think there is a video uh, uh, camera. Can you turn that on and see? Video camera is showing, but when I'm putting that uh, icon, uh, my voice is coming. Yeah, you have entered through wrong link probably. You have to join through that link which is given for 24th July. Uh -huh. Did you click on the email that Frank sent and it says please join this at 6.30 on July 24th. You click that. Have you gone through that process? No. No, no. I directly click, uh, some, click something. Oh. No, no, yeah. click, click that and then click preview and yes. here. So okay. go to the email and go to the bottom where it says, please join at 6.30 on July 24th using this link. Click on that and then go to the panel which shows your name at 6.45 and preview as Dr. Sindhu said. And then it will ask you for yeah, click on the preview when you get to Horace's page on Run the World. Yeah, yeah. I entered into that. Okay, and so it will set up your camera, say, it will tell you some things that if you join. Mm, yeah. Oh, uh, he's gone, so I think he's going to come back. Yeah. Maybe with the camera on. With so many user interfaces, I can tell you, uh, I know that people are not so happy about uh, Zoom, but everyone got introduced to video calls through Zoom, you know, conferences. So uh, there's a lot of Zoom, nice, Zoom yeah. works very well. You and know. That is very uh, user friendly. Yeah. Very user -friendly. Yeah. People may yeah. call it, but that's very user friendly. You know, we used to use Skype before. Oh, there you are. Yeah. I can see you now. Good evening. Yeah, I believe it's, yeah. Not, yeah, yeah, correct, correct, correct. Sorry, sorry for inconvenience. So we, no, that's okay. You, you're on time, and and so uh, we are now. So I, I the, you're the only one from, with whom I have not had an interaction in regard to any questions that may be a teaser question for you. You would like to say that now before we go live. We still have ten minutes time. Oh, ten minutes. You are in the MSME sector. You're in the banking microfinance sector, right? Yeah, yeah, right, right, sir, right. Luckily, we have the same field. So please tell us what questions, you know, you think, how do you, how do you expect, let's say, better financing for micro entrepreneurs or people like that to, to grow hmm. whatever you're so I believe uh, yeah, at the right question could be how Western banking can play a big role for SME sector. Okay. Our second topic yeah, could be. 
MSME sector. I love the word MSME, not just SME. Yeah, mm-hmm. and especially uh, when I say investment banking means nowadays there is a trend in alternate uh, uh, EIF, alternate investment fund. So there are lot many opportunities nowadays rather than conventional banking. So that can uh, play a big role. Especially lot of fintech and financial services are there globally, who are entering into the untouched area basically, or unserved okay. area where we. Personally, also play as a PCS venture, play some role on a equity by equity route. So that's question number one. And what's your question number two? Question number two could be: What are you going to have for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> just that should be the last question. <laughs> uh. Can we speed up? Uh, can we speed up financing for the MSME world? Okay. Or you know, if I may interrupt, yeah. yeah, you know, we have been hearing about financing for rural areas since the days of NABAD and you know. Hmm. Rural reconstruction bank. Why has it failed, and what needs to change? See, uh, if you see by any data from the World Bank, or still there are uh, roughly thirty to fifty percent rural rural world across not only in India across the world they are untouched. The reason is basically uh, their demand high and supply is in terms of the fund. So they need to be play a role of speed up of the scenario and engagement between the two parties. I mean, more fund to be. In, Go under the uh, yeah, last mile scenario, and that's why a lot of fintech company or say NBFC or MFIs NBFC. These are the new options now coming to the market. Very recently, that's, we have come. That's very interesting. But you know, when you have demand, high demand and low supply, mm. it could lead to a rush of supply, right, at higher prices. Yeah. So something is happening. Is it no collateral or is it some you know, uh, higher I, risk? Very, very good. Point, very good point. Very good point. See, no, for upper class of your consumer, people rush. I mean, let's say any even World Bank rush or every 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 sort of bankers rush. But when bottom of the pyramid you go, based on you know they are purchasing power basically precisely. They are not rushing or designing some solution. But there is a very interesting fact coming out from the bottom of the pyramid. If you check their uh, what is called right of figure percentage is almost. Negligible compared to the mid sides and the big one. So there must be some design Absolutely. by the financial you know, world. Absolutely, absolutely. We need we need to fix a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, six. You know, Neera, your point on compliance. I may touch upon one point where, you know, sometimes, you know, lots of compliance are absolutely necessary. Some of them are non non tariff barriers. Hmm. For example. When you talk about giving advances for you know businesses that don't have any credit hmm. and there are no banks, big business can give advances. True, but the the advances should be designed in a way that it doesn't become exploitative. True, true, true. But by law, an advance to a rural person is indentured labor, hmm. but it. It need not be indentured labor. So it is. There's a you know for compliance we cannot give advances, but we know that we could have brought a lot of people into the business fold hmm. if we would give them you know 15 days of working capital or one month of working capital without a bank. So there are some compliances like this, so, which are um, you know designed so that it doesn't happen. Well. Uh, this and many others, because I know the question is: we still this has eluded us for a long, long time. Yeah. Somehow yeah. it has eluded us. We we've talked, everyone proclaimed the policy. We are doing this and we are doing that, but somehow it is still, still eluded. I mean, the five states, just the five states, not to sound uh, prejudiced, the large five states, which are like 50 crore population, mm. is not. Giving twenty percent of the GDP, and you know, if you don't pull them out, how can we so, get into some kind of a growth? I saw the email that you wrote to one of the panelists. I think it was 
uh, you know, about the states, uh, UP, Bihar, West Bengal. I live in West Bengal. I work in UP. Uh, it's what is the common factor of these three states is the most dense population density, highest population density states in the country, other than India. Mm. So it's in some ways, it's also as a guy who's in agriculture, uh, the highest productivity of agriculture. It's almost like highly productive agriculture and high population density makes you unable to leave agriculture hmm. and move to something which is more productive than agriculture. You know, so the district, if you go district by district, the highest pop, uh, poverty is in the most productive districts. And in the lower productivity districts like Darjeeling, etc., people just leave and they leave, you know, they, they become waiters, singers, you know, whatever they whatever job they can get. Mm. And and they learn new skills. So in some ways, you know, how you know my answer would also talk about, you know, how do you ensure that there's not too much dependence on a small you know area of land by every member of the family? You know, it's the rural economy cannot sustain it, nor can the urban economy. If they, all these guys come to Delhi, you know, that'll, that won't work either. Or Bombay, or, or, or you know, any of the, Dhaka, or Calcutta, or anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the government seems to have additional occupation for all these uh, rural people over and above agriculture. So, like fisheries and poultry and all those things. But those were not even developed and pushed. The same reason agriculture doesn't work for yeah. farmers. Fisheries won't work for farmers or milk will not work for farmers. It's the same thing. Or, you know, artisanship would not work for farmers. It's, it's the same, you know, set of challenges. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I go to Chandigarh quite often now because one of my units has moved there. And I go there and I see the whole state of Punjab. I mean, they are overgrowing something that none of us need. Hmm. Wheat, paddy wheat, paddy wheat, high water subsidy rate. It's, it's rotting all over. But, you know, we're just going forward with that old archaic mafia control, which people don't want to talk about in open uh, forums, but that's a fact. Absolutely. And also MSP. Yes. And it, it's essentially mm. like when you're doing sugar in Maharashtra, you're exporting water, right? You're, 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 you're taking yeah. water from water staff places, causing droughts and exporting it. Yeah. Very irony. So, okay, we got, well, let's be ready. We got uh, maybe 40 seconds, we'll go live. At, uh, I'll hit button at 6.45 and we'll go and live. How long does it go, uh, go on to? 45 minutes, 45 minutes. So, we'll, let's keep our answers short because all of us have, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's better that, you know, we, we stick to the few minutes per question. Okay. So, yeah, we are going to go live and just whatever. Mm -hmm. Go live now. Okay, good morning, and good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Asset All India Meet. Uh, I know we've got uh, our co panelists from Boston, and the rest of us are from the Indian Standard Time. So that's uh, good morning, good evening. Um, I know some of us have been an old hand at Horasis and have met before and have had crazy and nice discussions from Liverpool to Calcutta to to digital, to live, and it's always good to meet old friends. That's that's one thing I've seen over the last 12 years that, you know, some of our friendship and relationships that have really built over time, being a boutique, uh, not like large, has really been very, very heartfelt for me that I've made some great friends here. Uh, the subject is, you know, we have 45 minutes. We have uh, the subject is translating rural India into an economic powerhouse. And I think this could not have been a more dangerous, uh, interesting uh, trillion-dollar question because I think uh, everyone's scratching their head 
how do we do this? Because this challenge is uh, political, mm. this challenge is uh, social, this challenge is financial, and this challenge is also cultural. Mm. So, uh, and and then somehow, at the risk of sounding too practical, uh, uh, the subject, even though we've talked about this, of translating rural economy into a powerhouse, has eluded us for a fairly long time. Okay. I, I, and I would request that we have a candid conversation so that we can really come up with something more real than just what generally, you know, the bits and bytes we have. So I have, I'm very lucky we got some crazy, nice, interesting people. Rudra, Rudra Chatterjee is the chairman, founder of Obiti India. And he leads India's uh, largest uh, home furnishing uh, carpets, furniture, B2B worldwide, plus you've got a whole lot of large tea uh, that you grow in Darjeeling, Rwanda and uh, Assam. You work with a fairly large number of people, 50,000 pluckers, weavers, etc., etc. So uh, we have some good questions for you because you're on the ground. And so thank you for coming uh, on board on this. Work. Absolutely. Good to meet you. Dr. Sindhu, uh, Boston. Uh, I think one of our most uh, star academic person <laughs> um, you know you, you've got your business from oxford state business school you've got mit sloan business school so we look forward to ha have a lot of uh, intellectual going forward insights of what you do i know you are the um, uh, chairman and ceo of esd global united states and you're doing a lot of great work in india and uh, and, and we'd love to pick on that model and see how we can actually Rinse and replicate that to 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 benefit us. We have Dr. Sheetal Kasat. Sheetal has been an old hand at Horasis as well, and uh, she is the chief growth officer and founder at S Forest Technology, and they are into the food preservative uh, domain. And you know, and and you guys innovate machinery and uh, new products to preserve and innovate and produce more. So I know you work with um, a lot of women entrepreneurs and micro entrepreneurs who will have a lot of interesting questions for you. And Pankaj Singh uh, is again uh, the founder and CEO of PCS Venture. Thank you for joining us, Pankaj. And uh, you, as you always say, that uh, the MSME banker is yeah, right. a, 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 a musical thing to most MSME people in, the, in, in India because they want to say, who is financing MSME sector? I want to talk to them because all bankers are financing the Adanis and Banis and uh, at the risk of sounding whatever. Uh, but uh, we're looking at actually the, the real issue on the ground. True. And, and we'll have some questions for you as to how we can transform this whole financing in the world which needs most. Money changes money. You have money, more money will chase you. That's the adage, but I think it's true. So... Let me start with Rudra. Uh, uh, again, uh, rural entrepreneurship. You've been on the ground rural for a long time, much before the subject came up and India started to say that let's do rural economy. What are the opportunities in growth in, in that domain? Uh, if you could take two minutes to say something on that. Absolutely, Niraj, and um, greatly looking forward to hearing from the other panelists as well. I think. Um, you know, we've had an opportunity for longer than anyone can imagine, you know, from the artisanship to producing food, uh, producing, you know, craft like carpets and furniture. Uh, the big opportunity, I think, is now, I don't know whether we'll grab it, but, you know, the, the, the whole chain of supply we saw during COVID has changed. The way uh, operations work, the way transport works, the way sales work, using technology and you know finding markets. I think we have to get, for example, in the home furnishings industry, you know, design talent in rural area, not just manufacturing talent. In the tea industry, get packaging talent in the rural areas, not just tea manufacturing talent, and figure out how we can we can actually reach the market globally in a way that entrepreneurs out of rural India stay in rural India because they see the opportunity in rural India. 
I know other panelists are going to talk about the financial, the logistical, and other issues. But I think uh, we need to understand that the world has changed since 2021, and we can reach anywhere in the world uh, for various sectors, even like a sector as different as tourism. You know, the amount of tourism in open areas in T mm. estate and in you know rural Rajasthan has shot up during COVID, but you need good internet connection. So you need the technology, you need the, um, the, the structure to support rural India, but it's fully capable. You give the same same uh, amount of infrastructure you give urban India, and rural India will make better use of it. That's great. Thank you for saying that. It's actually true that anything that we have moved to the smaller towns, including our cricket team, when, when the long tail... Um, happen from smaller towns, we became the world leaders. So it's the talent is there. We just need to support and empower them. Uh, thank you. I'll get back to you with some more questions on that. Uh, and, and I'll go to Dr. Sindhu Bhaskar. And, and I know that uh, you're such a, you've done so much research and work on the ground. So I'll, uh, you know, there are many unfilled, uh, the many unfilled, uh, banking finance that is yet uh, not reached in the rural sector of India. And, and, and to me, you know, that's the starting point in many ways. There are many people with so many opportunities and ideas, right? Yeah. And, 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 and I'll add a teaser question to you because let me allow myself to ask a teaser question. Uh, we are beginning to talk about an inverted capitalism. Can we do a bottoms up rather than a top down? The top down trickle down has happened for a long time, but we all know where we got. So these are the two quick questions. If you can share your thoughts on this. Thank you very much for uh, the fantastic question. Uh, let me start with your teaser question. Actually, that's the main plank of my platform that we have badly failed with our trickle down theory. So now there should be reform from below. The earlier concept of reform from like a movement from below used to be like a revolution and revolt. But now the concept of development is changing. So the pyramid has to be that the lower, say the tectonic plate of the pyramid, the lowest one, has to be shifted upward so that it can turn into the uh, middle class. Because the real development comes from middle class. Now, let me come to the uh, pl my platform, how I'm trying to develop it and uh, which way I'm uh, trying to create the theory of growth and development with my platform. For me, the flagship is banking because bank was supposed to create the development and bank never did. So it always remained elitist. Now with technology and fintech, we have huge hopes from fintech. But again, fintech is totally, totally elitist right now. Because why people are trying to go to MSMEs and SMEs and villages, but for what purpose? To skim, that is profit yielding. They are only going there for profit yielding. Look at the interest rate. Uh, it is 24, 28. How can any MSME and SME survive with all those things, even the farmers? So my model is a composite banking model which is moving towards development and growth of the country. And that's why I'm moving to uh, tier three, four, five uh, centers. Uh, next month, I'm launching BranchX in India. Uh, that is a new bank, of course, but it has the full stack of banking. So I have uh, money transfer also, which has been working for the last two years. And last year, even during COVID, uh, we could uh, churn out the total transaction of nearly 300 million US dollars. Uh, then we have um, uh, this microcredit facility, uh, which has also been working. In that, our uh, NPA rate is uh, very, very low. All our uh, working uh, loans and three, four times we have given loans to different borrowers. So that is one, our uh, AI-backed analytics is fantastic in that matter. We are even going, like if any uh, borrower is repaying, like say every month he is repaying, uh, say 50 uh, rupees, and he is paying five uh, uh, like notes of 10, dollar, uh, 10 rupees. So 
in one month if he puts in 50 dollar uh, 50 rupees bill then it flags our system flags that how come he could have such a big amount because that has not been his uh, uh, forte so these are the things which we are going into little small small things so that we can focus on all those things and we can understand the real working system in those places because we have been we shallow we have been discussing a lot but our uh, like our main problem is that of execution it is so tiny mm -hmm. so Absolutely. the four pla uh, pillars of my platform is capital aggregation capital utilization capital replenishment and marketplace so in the subsequent Perfect. questions i need to go ahead with those thank you dr sindhu i think uh, we're looking forward to some interest rate that are going to be maybe one third at least of or something in that range of what people are uh, paying at this point. Uh, Dr. Shrikal, you know, you are again working on the ground, uh, yes. very, very deep. So your business model, before I come to the woman part of it and how you're involved, uh, yeah. can you explain how this has been a success story working at the grassroots, which yes, you're sure. scaling up now to different yes. areas? What really worked well for you? Yeah. So that yeah. others learn something. What worked well? So, uh, definitely, I would like to uh, talk about the part of or the role of the technology and the role of the startups. Because most of the produce which is at the farm gate, we are carrying the water and there is no value addition which is happening at the farm gate. So, in S4S, uh, we have developed the technologies and right now we are working with around uh, 2,000 women farmers. And we have given the technologies to the farmers where they come and they process the farm produce at the farm level. So the value addition happens at the farm level and it is a win-win situation because we are reducing the number of middlemen in the supply chain. The farmers, we are not treating the farmers as just as a farmers who are the growers or the laborers. We should treat them as a entrepreneurs, the micro entrepreneurs. They can process the product at the farm. So there is no transportation cost or the no transportation losses are there. And at the same time, the margin or the benefit, which is coming from this value added products, it is equally divided. So it is a win-win situation right now. We are currently working in Maharashtra and we are seeing this is a scalable model. Wherever we can go, we can give the technology to the farmers for any kind of the value addition, which can be done at the farm rate. And it is creating the employment, it is creating the extra wages for the farmers. And it's good for the women farmers also because every time they can't travel to the other villages and go for earnings or the youth because the farmers and their next generations, because the lands are small. If it is divided again in the two brothers, again in the four brothers, they don't have much to do with that farm and the produce. Yes. So even if they form the FPOs or the small producing companies at the farm level, go one step ahead it is called layering if they go one step ahead rather than selling the corn if they sell corn grapes for example rather than selling ginger if they can sell dried ginger it will have the value and so i can see it can be an economic powerhouse is absolutely there and that we have observed during the pandemic also and before that also thank you i think uh I like the word that a farmer is a micro entrepreneur. Why not? He's in, yeah. sometimes he's an entrepreneur. The kind of resource crunch he has and the adversity. I think he's more of an entrepreneur than, than many of us, I guess. Uh, Pankaj Singh, um, yeah. you know, uh, you're you're playing in the MSME sector, uh, which again, you know, the MSME sector. Again, people talk about it. There's been a big talk about the MSME sector, employment of the most number of people in the country. But one of the things I always hear, and this is a story across all entrepreneurs, MSME across India, is the, the, re, the, the crunch, capital crunch, or the strings attached uh, with the mm. with that comes in. They're unable to service that later. And, and unable to grow because once they have signed up and then, you know, you're, you're in that loop. So do you think there are some alternate platforms or forums, institutions that are stepping in to meet this demand of the MSME, which, which actually plays a great role? I think he just, we just had a blackout on, on, on that thing. So yeah, he's moved back. So you think, uh, there are some other platforms available to fill in and service some of these requests, Pankaj Singh.
Can you hear us? Can do you hear, Mr. Pan, Mr. Singh? Did you hear? Yeah, we are hearing. Okay. So do you hear my question? That uh, are there alternate forums available to meet these demands and needs, financial needs of the MSME sector? Yeah, I, I've heard a question. So, so what are your thoughts on it. Yeah. Yeah. To, I'm, I'm, so, yeah, but please. I think there is a lag in his internet. So yeah, I think there is a, a, a. Yeah, so we'll get back to him as soon as he joins back again. So coming back to. Uh, we are going for uh, a last slide. Okay. Your, audible? Yeah, you're, you're audible. Please go ahead. So if you see the con uh, uh, last five decades, there was conventional backing to entering into the financial services, especially fintech world. So there is a smooth change in the system. Now, the way you know that our goods and grocery goes into the last mile, same thinking from the com coming from, you know, policy maker as well as the government side to let's reach your back near to the nearest customers. And that's how, you know, your fintech and the technology is playing a big role. There are so many company and especially MFI segment also, they are hang making hands with the all NBFC and fintech company to reaching the last mile. Uh, along with the guard, also have some some initiative in different different sectors like agro separately, MSME separately. There are so many channels. I believe there is some uh, uh, digital ad or some ad must be required to go in the last mile through the you know uh, mainstream channel. Which is I feel some consumer in the bottom of the pyramid is not aware the lot of scheme available. Either it is the fintech services via private channel or the government channel. That's so, but NBC, NVFC and last mile area across the nation, like North East and your extreme UP or Bihar, they are playing a good role. But it's a, it's a, you know, the structured requirement a setup should be required to penetrate, you know, and that's how we, that subject called speed of the, you know, financing player role. Now the scale has gone up, but speed also, the way we, we, you know, aggressive towards the food delivery, same mindset required to, you know, uh, Fund delivery should be on the same pace somewhere. That should be the new new norms coming. And in the post COVID also, some of uh, uh, some uh, even uh, nowadays uh, there is a one company who is coming right now. Internet, uh, your fintech services without internet is coming very soon in the world as a reality because you know fifty percent or thirty percent of the your uh, inner data of India is not connected to the internet. But recently. One of the technologies has ventured with the this uh, fintech service without internet, which is probably one of its kind in the world, coming very soon into the India itself. So that's the news from Quick World Side. Very encouraging. Thank you for sharing that. I think a lot of people would look forward to that point. I think if it comes very clearly. Uh, Rudra Chatterjee, again, back to you. I know uh, while we talk outside, a lot of things about what the government could have done or the institutions could have done. Uh, I would like to look inward and trying to ask you a question being an entrepreneur. Uh, what transparencies and compliances that uh, as an entrepreneur and businesses we can do better to improve the already existing conditions with, with the same set of rules? So it's not always outside problems. Sometimes it's internal as well. Absolutely. And it's a great question. And let me answer with a few examples. So let's let's first separate in terms of compliances, which are absolutely morally necessary. For example, you know, child labor uh, or you know, some environmental issues and compliances, which are uh, being done in a way that is both. It seems helpful for the small entrepreneur in the rural area today, but it's actually not. For example, uh, there is something called FSC certification in wood. Hmm. Uh, India, uh, wood in India is not certified, which does not show whether it has been cut following the norms of a forestry standard. Without having FSC certified, you cannot export furniture. 
so whatever wood you have used mm. you can be fine with us being a small carpenter without fsc certification but why aren't you becoming the furniture superpower of the world similar similarly you know traceability mm. is very very important so if you are buying something from a mandi you are not paying in a you know you are paying in cash you don't know where it's come from you have not used um you know you, ha you haven't used um, you know the norms of effluent treatment by doing all of that you might have saved 5% of your cost but you lost a huge part of your market exactly. in terms of what uh you know the points that were made by other panelists were uh, fantastic and i love the point uh, made by sheetal about you know going from ginger to you know value added ginger so to speak you know and, and in those it is very important to have outside this you know the entrepreneur himself but having a local system that you can get an fssai number you know to package uh, that you can get the organic certificate if it's organic it's almost impossible for big business to go organic can you imagine the opportunity of rural india to go organic in cultivation in terms of you know bamboo was considered a forest produce so you couldn't make bamboo furniture which was in the northeast part of the country the you know the most naturally occurring uh, source of uh, you know timber so to speak uh, there are many many areas where industries have to realize that if you have to grow and i think all of us have done this at some point of our career where if you have to grow you have to maintain world class standards Mm. and it is difficult to maintain world class class standards so it is important that you know entrepreneurs whether we are buying as bigger companies from smaller entrepreneurs so as a tea company if i'm buying leaf from a farmer do i look at the title deeds of the farmer i don't but if i ensure that all farmers who are providing leaf have title deeds i know that the teas haven't been grown in what used to be forest areas you know eventually it's good for me you don't have oversupply you also don't have the kind of ravages of climate change that you have similarly when you have small um, you know uh, businesses who are following all the packaging laws and they able to export furniture right out of rural you know rural jodhpur into homes anywhere in the world that's great for the furniture industry today india's furniture furniture industry is about 1% um, or 2% of china's it's crazy we have the labor we have the wood we have the craft in in some ways much better than china has but we are unable to capture that market because of these issues so i think it's a big problem thanks for asking me i don't know exactly what the solution is no but it's a good point and there's a glaring uh, i hope the message goes across that when you have no today in today's time people are looking at opportunities thanks to covid sadly it has shaken the business model and people are looking at what else and how to change and as you said if the furniture business itself because we don't have compliances as well there's such a large opportunity why not so that's a great point uh, dr sindhu bhaskar so you know the bottom up approach uh, inverted capitalism uh, empowering the bottom uh, uh, if we believe in it how actually can we do this it's a good word yeah. to speak about but how do we do this yeah so Uh, as i was discussing the platform that i have created and how i'm going about it uh, of course i very much endorse the point of sheetal also and i'd like her to uh, contact me and uh, let us talk more about that because uh, i'm trying to exactly do that uh, when we are talking of uh, industrialization of uh, rural india because that has to be done then only there can be real development so that's why uh, uh, the four pillars i talked of capital aggregation capital utilization in which we are providing the micro credit and all then is the capital replenishment in this we uh, uh, what i am basically trying to do is a rotation of capital now how you can do the rotation of capital i have created a concept of rural exchange and in 2019 when i Uh, took over a company uh, advisory mandi in india just for that purpose then i had announced this concept of rural exchange so uh, thanks uh, uh, to my stars that after that sebi and reserve bank of india have been started uh, doing 
symposium on uh, local exchanges. They don't call it rural exchange, but local exchanges. So I think we are moving in that direction. Already my app and my whole project for rural exchange with entire uh, full research and white paper is ready. Even uh, NASDAQ is ready to uh, give me funding and all. But I am not rushing into it because India is a very, very difficult terrain. I have to uh, 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 see all the uh, lacunas from all sides and uh, ring fence. It. Then I want to move. And the last place, uh, the pillar of my platform is market. I have tried to create is that those uh, uh, borrowers who have been very successful with us, because we are mostly working in those uh, tier three, four, five areas. So villages and rural people, and we have agents also who are helping us and helping rural people to bridge the connection and even to educate them with the technical development, how to use mobile and all. We, I'm also uh, working towards creation of a mobile, like uh, he talked of without internet and all. So it is fully packed with our uh, program and it does not require the internet, but you can operate everything on that mobile itself. So we are developing that. We are in the process, uh, but still to be uh, successful, fully successful in that. So in the uh, when we have good borrowers, what we are trying to do, we are creating our own tiny industry with them, be it they farmers or rural artisans. It gets converted into an enterprise. So we have created tiny industry which does not relate to government. So the quantum of loan goes higher to five lakh. And that unit is only producing not like uh, uh, ketchup and jam and jelly and all that. No, they are going into all those hard commodities which are really required outside India as well. And because our uh, rural economy is based on urban migration, that uh, rural migration is, uh, uh, is migrating to urban centers, working in uh, urban industry and getting money to rural areas. So this dependency on urban economy has to be cut. So when they will be uh, independent in generating their own wealth and economy, then there will be real development. So that's the agenda. So uh, now what I hear, because I'm also working in Africa and I'm also a partner of uh, All Africa Union for Free Trade. So I'm connecting Indian MSME to African MSME because I know I cannot compete with Europe and US right now. So let me go with same level people. Uh, because of all the certifications and all that, uh, as he said, discussed. So uh, I'm connecting them and I have already created the link. So what will happen? These uh, uh, Indian MSME or say unit will be producing say screws or uh, 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 any uh, anything uh, like nuts. And that will be uh, exported to say Ghana. Now, Ghana will be sending something to India, that unit. So I, I have connected them like that. But everyone will be paying so that they can have the forex earning. And these units will become uh, uh, the uh, contributors to the rural exchange as well. So these are different type of thoughts that I have created and I'm implementing. Right. Now we are working in a couple of areas. But all the verticals are not yet uh, active because I cannot activate everything without uh, government permission. So waiting for government permission. But all the uh, scheme is fully ready. All the paperwork is ready. All the plans are ready. All the applications are ready. Everything is ready. And we are bootstrapped. So I'm not being guided by any VC to dilute my vision. I have funded everything from my own source. And I'm sticking to my vision that how I have to regenerate rural India. Thank you, Dr. Sindhu, and good luck with all your convictions. And I'm sure the kind of conviction I heard, you'll make it. And this concept of connecting uh, Africa and India of similar economic income is, is a great one. So, um, Sheetal, uh, you know, you have this concept of farm gate, uh, you know, 
So what's the value addition of the farm at the farm gate? And how does it really uh, help the uh, increase in the income of the farmer? That's what we're looking at. How do you increase the income to the farmer using this model at the farm gate? so um, i'll explain this with the like with an example uh, when i say or i talk about the farm grade technologies we are mostly working around the dehydration part and uh, dehydration is removing of water from any agriculture commodity because we are carrying the water to the markets and then again some industries are drying these products and selling it in the market so we have developed a smaller dryers that are, which can be installed at the farm gates so for example ginger is an example again if the farmer is selling the fresh ginger at 10 rupees a kg and the for drying 1 kg of the dry ginger he the price he is in it's a 50 rupees raw material but at the same time if he sells this dry ginger in the market he will earn 75 rupees 75 to 80 rupees so that is the additional value he is getting at the farm gate so it is the example which is with the dehydration similar things can be done with the corn similar things can be done with the soya bean and any type of value addition which we can do with the women farmers or the farmers themselves at the farm gate and coming to the point like the uh, quality of the products and the certification what rudra was mentioning so there are the like where we have Uh, come across some model where we have a centralized system where we are collecting all the dehydrated products from the farmers and we are checking the quality if these are suitable for the ex client they require x percentage of moisture this much of pesticides or no pesticides and the quality check sorting grading is happening at the centralized collection center and then it is select, uh, selling this products to the industry or exporting this products here we are actually adding to the farmer and here we are also helping the industry to get a good quality product at the best price so that is the help of like farm gate technologies here any type of value addition normal packaging cleaning sorting grading farmers usually even don't do this they take the product as it is to the mandis and the sorting cleaning grading is happening at the mandis and for that purpose they are paying or they are losing basically 3 to 5% of the because it is like if these certain primary processing i am not talking about very high grade processing where you have to convert for example a packaged food at the farm gate i am talking about the primary processing which can be done at the farm gates thank you shibhil in fact that puts me to a question to rudra since we are talking about value addition and this ginger to dry ginger look at the world changes for that person <clears throat> tea is another thing I mean i know tea can be bought at some a few dollars a kilo maybe i'm wrong but to maybe 5 dollars for one tea bag or 4 dollars for one tea bag in regard to this so how is how are we as a industry in india looking at the value addition to bring uh, this more as uh, revenues from the same yield in the same area uh, your thoughts on either the tea part of it uh, that's a relevant question to the tea not the carpet so it, it i think it's it's broadly re- relevant and i always use this example that when you buy wine or olive oil you know the name of the producer when you buy tea or coffee you know the name of the distributor and uh, and that's probably because even because starbucks is a distributor you, you don't know the coffee farmer but you know the vineyard that you're buying the wine from yeah and that is at the heart of the problem it has a lot of historical reasons how these industries started but there's capital issue and there is also is a you know issue of understanding that the, in your question is the heart of the solution of finding the the person who's making the product has to own the product it is not that they are selling it in the auctions and whoever is buying it is then using the brand so that requires a lot of structural change i'll also talk about something that we ought to recognize you in your last question you asked me you know what can be done by yourself not just by it's the focus of quality there is something about 
products that we go for volume very quickly and drop the quality. And I have an experience in Rwanda. We run uh, one tea estate, which we have done like green field production in, and it's 95% supplied by farmers. Okay. And uh, it is ranked number one and sometimes number two in all of Africa in quality. The green leaf that the farmers produce in, in technical terms is 70 to 80 percent fine leaf. The green leaf that Indian farmers would produce and give to tea companies would be 30 percent fine leaf. So the quality of the product will significantly drop. Now the way, why is this so? Because in Rwanda and in Kenya, the farmers basically get a share of revenue. In India, they essentially get you know, 20 rupees kg of tea, irrespective of quality. So they are going after volume. So there's a structural reason that how can we get the farmer, you know, who's producing the sugar or the tea or you know, the wood, how can we find a way to incentivize them to make a better quality product and say that this is, you know, you supply to this, you know, converter, whether it's a furniture company or a sugar company or a tea company, and we will ensure that you know we want to make high quality products and you will get a better return on your investment there's a lot that needs to happen to do that but i think that there is a solution there okay thank you i think that's so important to bring more value added product in whatever we are doing in the same uh, land area yield all of that so uh, dr sindhu uh, i i think we talked about this before we start we went live is that you know while we're talking about translating rural India into an economic powerhouse, but if you look at four or five states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, you know West Bengal, Jharkhand, you know they they have almost 500 million people population, right? And they have lagged behind quite a bit even on the national average of per capita, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And while we talk about five trillion dollar economy. Personally, I don't believe that if UP cannot become a one trillion from a two fifty billion, how can India become a five trillion? I mean, it, it beats my mathematical sense. So, yeah. uh, can we be pragmatic and talk about this? <laughs> yeah, sure. First of all, in India, of course, there is north south divide. So you see the technical uh, prowess of uh, rural India in South India is different and much superior to North India. Because of the nature of polity also, I should say, these big states are treated as political vote banks. So there is more of political attention to these rather than developmental efforts. Because no one in Indian politics has been really development centric to create a, a development pocket in their borough. It has never been like that. So. Uh, the whole uh, political system is uh, responsible for that. But anyways, uh, we don't want to make any political statement here. Uh, we will just go by that, that government should be more proactive with that. And the state government should try to do something more. And they should try to have more connect with the fintech people and the real people who can cater to their development. Now, the uh, most important factor that I have analyzed is there is a real fragmentation in these uh, big uh, villages. So we have to aggregate the resources and aggregate the opportunities. We have rural banks also, we have NBFCs also, we have cooperative banks also. All of them are working indep uh, independently and everyone losing money. Now that cannot be accepted. And government has to again um, uh, give them money to recapitalize them. So these things cannot be uh, accepted. Now, if we totally aggregate, like aggregate them and bring their finances together for a definite stream of funding to farmers, that will make sense. Secondly, our tenor of loan is just one year. That puts pressure in case of crop failure. What we have developed in our scheme, we have created a longer tenor of loan, farmers loan, five years. And now we are aggregating all those farmers' loans 
bundling them into a bond and selling it because bond it is not again new concept you have kisan bond and all those which are issued by cooperative banks so you are just giving them a new direction that this is please work on this track so that it should be a combined effort and really uh, going to create some uh, result because scattered effort is diluting all the attention and all the results and now with five year bonds what is happening even if the crops are failing farmers are safe whatever subsidy insurance you get 50% can go again to the agricultural inputs to restart their agriculture and 50% can go to the sinking fund for uh, repayment of the bond so this type of funding arrangement we have done thirdly what uh, i have created is uh, i have divided the role of farmer in three segments one farmer as producer of crops even artisans are part uh, farmers and artisans rural artisans i'm calling them as one group so as producer second uh, vertical is uh, as seller of crop in which i have included the entire supply chain management and i have divided the markets right from uh, p2p to uh, p2b and c everything so you have local market immediately local market then district market which i call local market then national market and international market and the third is farmers as creators of wealth in that i created the concept of rural exchange and i created the concept of a uh, bilateral trade with overseas smes so that we can overall uh, commodify agricultural uh, products and uh, corporatize the rural economy and then only we can have a, a composite economy and a blooming economy for uh, rural india thank you dr sindhu i think uh, i think that the tenor the loan tenor from 1 to 5 will actually play a very very significant role in, in establishing you know the, the, the drought that we have all the time so gentlemen we've got just 2 uh, minutes to go if i had to ask you just in in 15 seconds some takeaways if you can just give in 15 seconds whatever you want to summarize your thoughts it would be nice so starting with rudra anything 15 seconds we'll go 15 15 seconds sure i think look for big scale opportunities where you can reach the market faster you know from the rural areas not something which is very small and big but large scale value addition opportunities okay great point uh again dr sindhu i have created a full umbrella of uh, applications right from uh, supply of agriculture inputs to market to even standardization of products that uh, app is there land health is getting checked soil uh, measurement of land uh, through agricultural drones and all that but that is a uh, later phase uh, then uh, by mobile app you can check the standard of your uh, grains and products before shipment what uh, we have been talking of that we don't have standard products so all those things uh, we have taken care of Thank you. Uh uh Sheetal. So I think uh, sustainable growth is definitely possible looking at the size of Indian farmers economy and uh, we can cater to the world's total global economy with the good products in quantity. Thank you so much. Well gentlemen, uh we just come to the end of this we have a very nice conversation. I always a uh, uh, request and appeal to uh, everyone who is part of this that I think we we found some synergy with each other in regard to the thoughts exactly. uh what i'll do is i'll just share the numbers to each other and you know so that if uh, on a need basis or whatever let's stay in touch uh and 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 try and build this country from where it is to go forward thank you so much have a great I'm evening working with a lot of startups also and a lot of people are working with me about 28 startups So, so we'll yeah, be in charge with the company. So, Mr. Rudra, yeah. Ital, like most welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much. You have a great evening and a great day ahead. Okay. Thank, Thank you, sir, for hosting it. Bye bye. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you.